Hi there, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is me, Pigeons ASMR, and today I'm going to be doing my makeup and making some makeup sounds and just kind of chit chatting. It's gonna be very casual. I mean, yeah, just really chill, casual, doing my makeup, chit chat video. So, first things first, I'm going to pin my bangs back to kind of just get them out of the way here. So, get them out of my face. It's one pin. There we go. <laughs> Ooh, cute. <laughs> I'm breaking out so bad, even on my forehead now. And I'm not sure what is going on because I literally have never broken out on my forehead, even as a teenager. So, I don't know. I'm having some like adult acne situation going on here. everything to get rid of my acne. It's bad. It's bad. It's never been this bad before. I feel like I've tried almost everything, you know, to get rid of this acne. And it's just not working. I recently switched to um, the body shop tea tree the tea tree oil skincare line and I do see a difference with that um, I do notice that like the smaller kind of well, you wouldn't know it here but believe it or not my skin looks better than it did I did notice oh I forgot primer the smaller pimples, like on this side of my face at least, have gone away. I don't know why it's my left side that breaks out so much. Um, it's frustrating. I try so many different, you know, skin cleansing products and skincare products. And still, Nothing works. So, but I have heard really, really good things about the tea tree line. So, I'm gonna go ahead and continue using that. And I've also been using um, some of the Body Shop's face masks. I need primer on my forehead. So that. The foundation doesn't set into my wrinkles too bad. <laughs> I'm gonna use some watermelon burst hydrating primer by Ciate. C I A T E. like a little sample size that my sister gave me for Christmas. Just got some here. I'm just gonna put it on my forehead. I honestly don't even really know what prime is for. Is it to make makeup stick better? I'm pretty sure it's to make makeup like stick onto your skin better. I guess I'll just put it everywhere that I don't have makeup right now. I always forget primer. There we go. Maybe that'll help. Okay, 
So, I have the Il Maquillage. It's dirty as heck, but the Il Maquillage woke up like this foundation. Flawless base foundation in the shade 120. This is a really good shade for me in the summer. But it's the middle of winter right now where I am. It's a little bit too dark for me right now. But that's okay. I can make it work. <laughs> I've got a little mirror down here. Anybody out there watching is going through or has gone through adult acne struggles, you know, drop some tips for me. <laughs> um, your favorite products, products that have, have worked for you. I really don't want to, you know, go on medication for it, like Accutane. I know that that's helped a lot, a lot of people, and it's awesome. It's it's an awesome invention, but I have heard that there can be some negative um, side effects on mental health. And for me, I just don't really want to risk it. I feel like. Over the past um, year or so, you can probably hear the dogs running around downstairs, but I've been at a really, really great place mentally over the last year or so. It's taken me a long time to get, oh my gosh, it's taken me a long time to get to a place where I can feel really confident in saying that I have good mental health. Um, and I personally would rather struggle with my acne than struggle with mental health again. Just my own personal opinion. If you don't feel the same, that's totally fine. We're all different. We all have different priorities and desires and and everything and no matter how you feel about it totally fine totally valid hmm. so it seems like the primer is helping a little bit with my makeup like my foundation doesn't even come primer is helping uh, the foundation not set into my wrinkles, my, my creases on my forehead so much. That's okay. Yeah. So if anybody has suggestions for what might work make this any shorter. I feel like I'm at the bottom of the screen here. I feel like I'm making it taller. No, that's taller. And that's smaller. I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's a little shorter. Oops. Yeah, if anybody's got suggestions for maybe uh, how to help acne. I'm super open to hearing it. Super open. Super duper open to hearing it. Any help is good help. So I'm just gonna put another layer of foundation over my cheeks and my chin to try and disguise over my blemishes. Um, I do know 
that a major factor contributing to my skin struggles as of late over the past year has been the masks. Um, I don't ever wear face makeup to work at the Montessori school, which is pretty much, you know, the only place I wear a mask for a prolonged period of time, unless I'm out shopping or something, which I don't do very often, to be honest. Um, yeah, at work, and my big problem area is, well, really, my jaw and under my my jaw. So about here to here. And it's, you know, it's come up my cheek a little bit here. I don't have much on this side. But it has come up here. It's not cystic, which I'm thankful for. Because I know cystic acne can be quite difficult to treat and quite painful. So I, I'm very thankful that it hasn't developed into um, cystic acne. But nevertheless, it is very persistent along my jaw and my chin. And I think also something, I have very easily irritated skin. I think that if, when I wear a mask, I tend to lean on my jaw at work, you know, with the, with the tables, with the kids, and I lean on my jaw a lot, um, which I think irritates it and causes my breakouts to be even worse. Constantly having that friction and, you know, you're breathing in the mask and having the bacteria pushed into my skin probably does not help, and I catch myself doing it a lot definitely subconscious, but I really would like to try and do that less. So, I'm going to take my contour stick here. It is in medium dark soft sculpt shaping stick. Makeup by Mario. This is also very dirty because I accidentally closed it when it was still twisted up and it's just gotten all over it just keeping it real i don't know how so many you know girls online seem to have their lives really together um but i don't <laughs> never have and probably never will that's okay I'm always scared to put too much of this. So I put a little bit here. And also at the top of my forehead. Because <laughs> I got a big forehead. And then I do my cheekbones here. And my jaw. Just to kind of give my jaw a little bit more definition. Oh, my chin is sore. I do like to give myself a little bit of definition along with my nose. I wonder why there's makeup all over that. But then the really cool thing about this is that on the other end is this little brush here which I did not know about for at least until I did not know for at least the first month that I had this contour stick. I was trying to open it one day, I was pulling on it, and this lid just popped off. Oh, <laughs> whoops. And, uh, 
I was shocked and I was like, oh my gosh, that's wonderful. It's wonderful because I struggled to get my contour to get this stick to really blend with this. This brush is like a miracle brush. It blends it so easily. I suppose that's what it's meant to do. Yeah, no, this brush is great. I really like this contour stick too, honestly. Love the color. I love the consistency. I'll definitely continue to use this contour stick once it's empty. It's so easy to blend after finding the brush. Something I also have never had is acne scars, like pitting, pitted scars like this. But I have gotten a few over the last couple years. Yeah, there's one here. That's gonna be permanent. Some on my cheek here. I'm really not sure why. I don't even think I had a pimple here. I mean, maybe I did, but I don't recall ever popping it or anything. Yeah, I've got one here too. Um, acne does run in my family. My grandfather had very severe acne as a teenager. And yeah, it was it was pretty severe. Um, my I'm the oldest of five kids, and all of us <laughs> have struggled with acne. My oldest younger brother had. Pretty good acne as a teenager. And my sister also had a little bit of acne. Wasn't that bad. She still has some breakouts here and there. But um, it was a struggle for her too. I definitely struggled with acne, but it was nothing severe. Nothing severe in high school. You know, when I first was going through puberty, I didn't... I didn't have acne that bad. Which is interesting because... Like, my acne... Okay, well, you know what? When I was about 19 years old, I really, really struggled with acne, too. Okay, so gonna see if this works spray my face with a bunch of this fix fix spray fix plus really get lots in there and then use the sponge just dab it it's supposed to really help your makeup set. Um, yeah, I didn't struggle that bad in high school with acne. Like, I had some pimples and stuff. But then, when I was 19, it got really, really bad for a while. 18 or 19, after I, like the year or two after I graduated high school. And then it cleared up. Um, well, it cleared up, I think, because I went on birth control. And then... No, I went on birth control in high school. 
and my acne had cleared up that I went off birth control when I was around 18 to 19 and broke out really, really bad. And then now I don't know why I'm breaking out so badly. Like I genuinely don't know. It might be stress and I think it definitely has to do with the masks too. It's just so frustrating, you know? I already drink a ton of water. <laughs> that, I don't know if you've seen my videos with that huge water bottle, but I try to drink that every day. So I'm very hydrated. I cook healthy food at home. So, you know, from what I can guess, it's probably not dietary. Could be stress. Could be wearing makeup more often, maybe. I don't know. Oops. Okay. I think my skin is done. Looks kind of interesting in the mirror, but I think it looks okay on the camera, so fingers crossed. I've got a mirror also behind the camera too, so if I'm looking past the camera at all, that's why. Hmm. You know what I think about a lot? I love thinking about all of the things that I would really love to do when COVID ends. Like kind of bucket list items. Something that COVID has kind of shown me is that it's very important to take advantage of opportunities when they come around because you never really know when those opportunities will not be there anymore. I mean, not that we'll never be able to, you know, travel again. Now I'm just using some translucent powder. Well, apparently I'm using a lot of translucent powder. <laughs> Under my eyes. This, this is setting. I don't really know how to do it though. <laughs> For being totally honest, I do not know how to do this, but I see Kyra do it, so I'm gonna try and do it. She does it there and there and under her eyes. And then she says, let it sit and then use a damp beauty blender. I'm gonna go make this more damp while this sits on my face. Okay, oh I forgot to put this. Um, yeah, what I was saying is that it's very important to um, Oh wait, she does it with a wet, she puts it on with a wet thing, with the wet sponge. Uh oh, what did I do? Oh, well, it does work better when it's damp, that's for sure. She looks all right. Okay, so something that is an absolute dream, it's on my bucket list, is to see every province and territory in Canada and to just travel and 
and specifically I really really want to see like all of the national parks I want to see all of the national parks in Canada and in the US I just the diversity of the landscape and the history and the cultures you know the the huge variety of different cultures and ways of living that the national parks represent I just love it and I think that it's super super fascinating and I really want to visit all of the national parks that's that's a bucket list dream of mine all right well I believe it was either 2018 or 2019 Sabrina and I went on a beautiful well it must have been the summer of 2019 because yeah it was the summer of 2019 um, we went on a cross-country road trip live in Ontario, Canada, and we drove from Ontario all the way across the country out west to British Columbia and to Vancouver, British Columbia. It was life-changing. <laughs> it was absolutely stunning and the way I would never change for a second the way that we did it we rented a vehicle we had one, two, nine or ten days and we drove 5,500 kilometers total and camped across Canada. We went camping across Canada out of our car and we were very limited in what we could bring because we were flying home and we couldn't bring everything back home with us so we had to fit everything in <laughs> in a foldable cooler, all of our food in a foldable cooler or you know just things that we could eat like that didn't require to be taken home or didn't require refrigeration and we fit all of our clothing in two backpacks one for each of us <laughs> and our tent no we fit our tent in one backpack and our clothes in another or something like that we had very very little with us on this trip we had two tiny backpacking mattresses that we could roll up really small and it was just oh my god it was so fun we definitely had sore backs after that one sleeping on the ground <laughs> for a week but uh, it was amazing and we got to really really experience the changing landscapes across the country um instead of you know staying in hotels and such we really got to to see what nature you know the the different types of nature the different wildlife the different scenery um and really just got to experience the huge vast wildlife So we started, um, I could definitely do an entire story time video about our road trip out west. But anyways, though, where I'm going with this, um, yes, let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. I can show you some pictures and tell you all about it. I would love to do that. Um, but 
this. I really wish we had, no, this must have been the summer of 2018 because we had planned, yes, because we had planned to go out east and hit up the maritime provinces and uh, yeah, explore that side of the country the next summer. And then we decided to put it off to save up some more money. And then COVID hit and we still haven't been able to go. And I'm not complaining. I know that people have it a lot worse. Um, all I'm saying is, I wish that we had taken the opportunity to go on that trip before COVID because uh, we never would have guessed that we would have had to wait like three years longer before we could go. But that is the absolute first thing that I want to do when life goes back to normal, which it will eventually, I believe. I believe it will go back to normal eventually. Um, I've had this trip. We're going to do it in the same kind of style that we did our, our Western trip. So either we're going to rent a vehicle, but I think that well, we want to take the dogs with us, so we're going to try and, and make a longer trip, like maybe a two or three week trip, and drive down through Quebec and New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and then kind of go up and back home. So drive there and back. So we will be able to bring more stuff with us. Um, but the thing about renting a vehicle is it is wildly expensive. That is where the majority of our money went for the other trip. So I was, I've been thinking about buying a new car because, or new to me car, because the car that I drive, I bought it um, as is. It was self-certified. It was like $3,000, a little bit over $3,000. It's a Mitsubishi RVR from 2012. I love it, but she's old. <laughs> um, she definitely won't make it like 10,000 kilometers driving so many hours a day and such. And uh, Sabrina drives a Chevy Cruze, so that's not enough space for all of us. Um, I really want, as my next car, I would really love a Mitsubishi Outlander. That's the same vehicle that we drove across Canada when we rented the vehicle. That's the vehicle that we ended up getting. And uh, we both just fell in love with it. That was the reason why I chose the RVR, because it, it reminded me so much of the Outlander. But I would really love another, I would really love an Outlander of my own. So that's, I love SUVs and anything that kind of gives us space for our stuff when we're camping. We always use my vehicle when we go on camping trips, which we, we try to do it every summer or at the end of the summer because at the beginning of the summer there's too many bugs and I'm scared of those really bad. <laughs> so we like to camp in late August, early September. Um, yeah, so our, our trip that we took, we were gone in the end of August. So it was really cold once we got over into the Rocky Mountains. We were not prepared for how cold it would be at night. We ended up having to sleep in the car because it was freezing. But it was gorgeous. Anyways, though. Yeah, 
So I've had the entire Eastern trip planned basically since we got back from our last trip out west. Um, I've, had, I've had that trip planned with Google Maps screenshots and you know our daily itinerary. I'm not a planning person but when it comes to planning trips I'm good at that. Um, yeah, I've had that entire trip planned for nearly three years now and I see the screenshots on my phone and I'm like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get back on the road. You guys probably don't know this about me, but my absolute dream since I was in high school, like since I was 14 or 15 years old, um, my dream is to own a camper van. It's super trendy now. And I think that it's pretty cool that van life has kind of like become a mainstream thing because this is something that I've been dreaming about since I was a kid. This is something I've been dreaming about since I was a kid and everybody thought I was so weird and nuts for wanting to live in a van. Um, but now I see that I'm definitely not the only one who wanted to do that. Um, definitely not because lots of people are doing it now. And as I get older, I realize even more how much sense it makes to live in a van because it's so much more cost efficient. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's. Mm. <sighs> like sometimes I just, if I'm having a really hard day at work, I'll just sit or zone out and just imagine my hands on the wheel of a beautiful camper van driving down the highway with the tunes playing my bed in the back and my dogs going for hikes that feels like an unachievable dream but one day I will get there I will that's just that is my absolute dream. And, uh, you know, it feels like, like I'm a little bit, like I'm a little closer because with being able and, and being fortunate enough to do YouTube part-time right now and I'm working my way towards full-time, it feels a little bit closer, like a little bit closer in reach, um, a little bit more achievable because obviously living in a van, it's, it's not ideal to have a stationary career and job, right? Um, it's hard to, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's people who do it, I'm sure. But I imagine it's a little bit difficult to keep a steady job in the same place and, uh, and live in a van. So, but with YouTube, it isn't a career or a job that is bound to one location, which is an absolute blessing and something that I've wanted for a long time um, to be able to work without being bound to one place. I definitely have more eyeshadow on this side than this side. I'm gonna fix that. But to work without being bound to just one location. That's a definitely an important aspect that 
it was, it's been an obstacle that I've been trying to overcome for years and I did not even realize that it is becoming a reality in my life um, not being bound to one location and it's it's totally possible and totally doable and really freaking cool so but then with Sabrina she's great um she she knows she's definitely the complete opposite of me she's not the kind of person who's always had this deep desire to just kind of travel and explore and go on adventures and such she's never she's never really been driven towards that kind of a thing she really really values stability and routine schedules she loves that she loves having the consistency in her life and I know there are a lot of people like that too and that's great um, but she's she's definitely not interested in living in a van and traveling so but she she knows how much it means to me to be able to do something like this in my life and she always says to me we will get you your van one day we will get you your van it's like a goal in her mind she's amazing and she totally supports me going off for a couple weeks at a time and traveling and coming home and going and coming with her career she works in law enforcement um, she she needs to kind of stay put it's definitely not the kind of career that you can that you can travel and maintain but she respects my dreams and she supports my dreams and that means the absolute world to me so. but yeah so I'm from Ontario and we've got some beautiful national parks here but we have also got a stunning provincial park system there are so so many provincial parks that offer camping hiking swimming recreational activities and such there is so and the, the landscape in Ontario is so diverse and oh my god it's so beautiful there's so much here to see um, when we when we were traveling out west, we were up in the northern part of Ontario and we decided, we were like, what are we gonna do today? We had like a whole day to just chill without having to drive very far. I think we only had like a three hour drive that day. So we were looking for things to do and we, f we were talking to one of the rangers at the park and I think that's what they're called, park rangers uh, we were talking to one of the staff at the park that we were camping at and we were like What's, what trail do you recommend? what would you recommend to do around here? and they told us about this canyon, about this hiking trail that led to a canyon and they were like it's pretty nice yeah it's it's really cool and we're like okay we're gonna go see like you know some rocks and maybe there's like a river at the bottom or something we didn't expect anything you know anything crazy because it just didn't seem like an area that would have something like this but when we got there we walked through the trail expecting to come up on like a little cliff or something a little canyon and when we got to the lookout, it was this enormous, 
enormous canyon just in the middle of the forest and it went as far as you could see and it was so deep that in the bottom of the canyon arctic plants were growing because it was so deep that the sun just never hit the bottom of the canyon it hardly ever heated up the bottom of the canyon and it was so cold down there that there were plant species at the bottom of the canyon that you could only find about a thousand kilometers north they had said and that oh my god that blew my mind i still think about the first time we saw that and the first thing we thought to do was to facetime our families to facetime our parents because we knew that they had never seen anything quite like that my mom is not an exploring kind of person she's very much a homebody as well as my stepdad and you know they were like stunned too and sabrina's family too it was just wild it was stunning i don't even know where i'm going i'm literally just rambling on and on um, but when we go out east oh so yes i want so badly to travel in a van oh yes so that was in a provincial park that canyon we've got so so many countless parks in Ontario and uh, that's also something that I really want to see we live in such a beautiful country that I honestly did not know much about growing up. I learned a lot as an adult outside of school, outside of high school. I learned more about this country outside of high school geographically than I ever learned in it. I, I'm a geography nut. I love geography. I think that it's so fascinating. Um, I love learning about different countries, different cultures, different landscapes within the same countries. Like even in America and the United States, love learning about the differences between the states and what the landscapes are like there. Um, and it is a goal of mine to be able to locate every country on the map and I would love to be able to locate all of the different you know provinces and territories and states and such which I'm almost done North America I think that's very interesting. I don't know if I can do it anymore, but I had learned all of the countries and provinces and like different states and such in Canada, um, Mexico, and the United States. And then, you know, the, the lower countries, the smaller countries, like Belize, Nicaragua, Panama, so on and so forth. The funny thing is, I took one geography class in high school, and I always thought it was so boring until a few years ago I couldn't even locate all of Canada's provinces on the map and then in 2018 yeah yeah in 2018 Sabrina and I had moved out of her parents place back to where we live 
which is where I grew up, I was bored. I felt like I was kind of stuck in a rut. I Like I never really did anything. And something that had kind of sparked my interest was the trail system that we have in the city that we live in. And so I visited the website of the Trail Association in my city. I saw that <laughs> are these even not really? I saw that they were having a contest kind of like a trail, like a hiking competition. See who hikes the most trails within the month. And when I get obsessed with something, I get, I get really obsessed and I go all out. Well, it was January and January in Ontario. Northern Ontario. Chile. It was the coldest winter that we had had in years, um, and I decided that I wanted to do this trail challenge, and I convinced Sabrina to do it with me. She's not much of a hiker. She doesn't really like it. She finds it boring. Oh gosh. What happened here? How'd that happen? Um, where's my animation? But she was very supportive and she took on the challenge with me. Um, and we hiked, we both worked full time. And the sun sets here, like, during January, at like, four something. So when we finished, by the time we finished our jobs, it was already dark outside. And we were hiking every single day, a few kilometers every single day, in the dark, in the forest, in like, minus 50, without snow pants without proper winter coats. <laughs> I do not know. Like, with no hiking experience. I have no idea how we survived. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know what possessed me to feel the need to do that. But we sure did, and we finished the month with a lot of trails under our belt. On the weekends, on days that we were off, we would hike like two or three trails back to back. So we would do one, that was a few kilometers, finish it, drive to the next one, do that one. Like, I was just obsessed with it. I still really love hiking. There's, my favorite trail is this 10 kilometer trail takes three or four hours to finish it, um, but on a nice day, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. It's in a conservation area in our city. And then 
um, every August, the Trail Association does a very, very long hike that connects. There's something called, it's called the Great Trail now, but it's, uh, it was formerly known as the Trans-Canada Trail. So we have a trail. We have a trail that spans all the way across the country. It's incredibly long and it the goal of the trail is to connect the entire country by foot. There are still a lot of sections that are on roads, but there's a huge amount of trail. Like you can walk from one side of the country to the other side of the country on this trail, which would probably take years and years. <laughs> I think it's like 11,000 kilometers or something. But anyways, um, the section of the Trans-Canada Trail in our city is 30 kilometers. About 30 kilometers, it's a little bit longer. But the Trail Association hosts this huge hike where you walk all 30 kilometers in one day from one end of the city to the other end of the city along the trail. And I've done that a few times. You're absolutely, <laughs> like, incapable of moving the next day. And by the end of the day, you're, like, limping and shuffling along. <laughs> but it's, it's fun. It's really fun. And it's really, really beautiful. I still love hiking. I, well, probably never not love hiking. Haven't done it in a little bit. It's been a really crazy busy year, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I've got lots of things on my bucket lists. I have a whole list of trails that I want to hike before I die. And, uh, and I mean long trails, like I would really love to hike the Triple Crown in the United States, the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Appalachian Trail, Pacific Crest Trail, and Continental Divide Trail. That one is not as finished as the other two, but it looks stunning. Anyways, <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching and listening to me rambling on and on and on about acne and traveling and living in a van hiking and all sorts of good, good things. <laughs> all right. So if you enjoy videos like this, please like the video and let me know in the comments. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for acne. And also, what's the one thing that you miss the most that you haven't been able to do the last couple of years? What can you not 